CRISPR stands for Clustered Regularly Interspersed Short Palindromic Repeat. So it's a very long acronym, but essentially what that means is within the bacteria, what actually happens is when they encounter a virus trying to infect the bacteria, they actually keep a short memory. They keep a little memory of that viral genome stored within their own bacterial genome, and that's within this so-called CRISPR array. It's separated by these short palindromic repeats. And so when the virus comes back and tries to reinfect the bacteria, they can activate that little sequence of their genome, make an RNA that targets the viral genome using these Cas9 pro or Cas proteins, Cas9 being the most common one. And so that's really the system is the CRISPR array making an RNA to target the viral genome in combination with this protein also encoded by the ba bacteria. What's really exciting about CRISPR is that it actually was discovered as part of the bacterial immune system, which is what's really amazing. It's this really fundamental research, but we realized we could harness the power of this system bacteria developed to cut the genomes of viruses that invade bacteria. We realized we could cut the genome of any organism, so that includes animal cells, plant cells, and human cells, and that's what's really exciting. And so on the one hand, while it might sound scary to cut a genome, we realize we can use this both as a research tool, and now it's actually starting to have therapeutic implications where we can edit the genome, we can cut out genes, put in new genetic sequences. So it's really kind of the next stage of genomics. We spent so much time sequencing genomes. This is getting into myeloma therapy and translation. Now, now we can actually edit genomes. And so now the question is, can we bring these benefits to patients with this technology? I think the one that's most exciting and the one that we're actually bringing to patients now and the first trial is actually happening in the, UC, uh, um, excuse me, in the United States is being led by the University of Pennsylvania with UCSF and MD Anderson being the two participating sites. We're not bringing the CRISPR to myeloma patients yet, but the way I put it is we're bringing the cells from myeloma patients to the CRISPR. So basically what we're doing, I'm sure many of your patients know about T-cell uh, engineering type therapies, whether CAR T-cells or engineered T-cell receptors, where we take T cells from patients, expand them in the lab, and then genetically engineer them to now come back and fight myeloma back in their own body. So this is kind of the next step. We're trying to make those cells work even better. And so this is the exciting part is we're using this CRISPR technology to basically delete genes that we think make those T cells get exhausted or stop working in the patient. So we're going to engineer the T cells to kill the myeloma, but hopefully we'll get them to last longer and lead to even more durable responses. So that's the goal of using the CRISPR technology. Here. We're just enrolling our first patients now. This first study is very small, I would say. So for, you know, I would say for patients who would hope to be enrolled on this, there's actually only six slots across the three institutions. So it's very few. Um, there are two other indications also uh, as part of the trial. It's both sarcoma and melanoma as well. And so it's only 18 patients. We're just starting to enroll our first ones. I will tell your patients too, I mean, there's, there have been a lot of concerns in terms of what happens when you edit the genome. This is one reason that many companies are thinking about bringing and CRISPR technologies into patients directly, but we don't know exactly what happens if they're so-called off-target effects. What if you cut other parts of the genome you don't mean to? Could those have other effects that we just aren't aware of yet? So there's been a lot of delay and hesitation in terms of even starting this very small trial. So I mean, I hope that we'll start to see something within a couple of years. I will say I think it's worth for your patients to know as well that there have been a lot of advances going on in China that a lot of information hasn't gotten out there yet, and so data from those studies might start coming out even sooner. Not necessarily all of them are in myeloma, but in other cancers, but it's gonna give us a hint of what happens when you use CRISPR technology, especially in T cells. In other cancers, that's gonna inform what we can do in myeloma.